so they had to reschedule their match. Um, so that got rescheduled, but the loser's bracket also happening. Team Excellent currently up one game to nothing over Vietnamese Dream Team. It's a pretty good series there. And then, of course, the other series, Nice Prize Pool versus... Nice Prize Pool versus... I'm blanking. Who are they playing? Internet Gangsters. Internet Gangsters. No. This round. Oh, we just oh saw whoops. That. I didn't refresh. Give me a second. Nice Prize Justice Pool League. versus Justice League, of course. That's right. They're actually still in the first game, I believe. And actually, speaking of that, let's take a look at that. Monitor game. Whoa! That seems like it's a crazy game. Ooh, Woody Flag on the Zephyr, it looks like. Yeah, corrupted on the other side. Pretty back and forth game. Seems like Justice League might have a slight lead, if anything, but you got Zephyr as a uh, top farmer in the game, and top level in the game, I should say. So we'll keep an eye on that to see how that one obviously progresses there. Both those teams trying to stay alive. As far as this is concerned, the winner of this going to the winner finals, guaranteeing yourself at least top three as far as the pricing goes. If you lose this, you're knocked down to lose this bracket. Of course. So, uh, you know, really, again, though, what what more else is there to say <laughs> about uh, about not only this matchup but State Green in general? It's they're they're the team to beat clearly, and uh, so far I haven't seen the the challenger step into the plate just yet as far as uh, making it difficult. So obviously uh, we still got plenty more cycle of left here, but um, TMSR difficult to respond for sure. You see the bans coming out: Engineer, Parasite, Pebble, Scout going to be banned. Engineer and Pebbles prioritize as TMSR goes, so obviously Paris are the only jungler band. Lodestone Valiant is the first pick here by Moon Meander. Swin Melons responds with the Keeper pick. You got Torture followed by Master of Arms. Are they going to give them Keeper Tempest again? If they go Tempest here, I mean, they have basically the same lineup they had last game already. You had Torture and Glacius, a couple of pickups here. Ophelia. Oh, they give them Ophelia too. Wow, Ophelia was still on the board. Man, that's brutal. I I I, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know how. Not uh, you know, it's one thing to obviously not ban it. You only have four bans now. Then we get into the picks, but to not pick them up for yourself, you know, TMS are not necessarily a keeper team. That's fine. I, I get that, but the Ophelia, Shams played a solid Ophelia the last game, and and then Tempest on top of that. It's it's I don't know. It's hard to do in the end. You only get so many picks and bans, of course, sitting up to that point. But stay green, managing to get Keeper, Master, Ophelia. So once again, global presence, mass push potentials there. TMSR, again, they capped out something up to sleep. Clear. I mean, you don't let them have those heroes without at least a plan, of course. So again, it's kind of just cycling through your ideas of, well, this one didn't work. Let's try this one. I mean, we saw that in the Ultimate Series Predator Tournament. We see that here again today. How do you defeat not only Stay Green, but the lineups that they choose? Vanning Stage moving along here. You have Deadwood and Rally being banned by Team SR. Wild Soul War Beast actually coming up for Stay Green. How about that? There's a Dimension Shaman banned from Team SR, so Balfagor is still on the board with that said. They actually banned on Deadwood Rally instead. Wild Soul War Beast being banned by Stay Green, though. They actually take away some good suicide options themselves for Team SR. I was thinking, you know, obviously, though, the idea that War Beast could be good for Stay Green, but at the same time, probably not. Might be awkward lanes. So just don't want to give the option to TMSR to have those. Fades the final ban. So Balfour, no doubt, the first hero that I'm eyeing. And I know you don't usually say that, but with Stay Green, they they dominated TMSR last time. They played them with that in both games. There's the Predator pickup coming out here by TMSR. So, uh, going to go the Predator route, and, again, I don't know. It's, it, going to here like Predator, you're, you're more, you're more of a, we, we're going to get this guy farm early on, and more of a passive gameplay in that sense early on. Now, as, you know, it gets the early item, the other Parasite, and the Sanitarius, whatever you choose, obviously you can start to get more involved, but also a case of, he doesn't really provide much in creep clearing potential. Something to keep in mind. That's for something like maybe a silhouette. Could have been a, a solid option for that. Even something like a Malakin for your carry here of choice. But they're going to go Wretched Hag for Stay Green over here. And there's Forsaken Archer. So going both Predator and Forsaken Archer. Interesting. Not too often you have uh, a double carry strat like this. I mean, you know, it's one thing to see a hero like Pestilence and then a hero like Predator or a Pestilence Forsaken Archer, but... Because, you know, Pestilence, if anything, he's kind of that semi-carry, but also a great tool to assist your carry with that swarm ability. But 
and the initiation factor, but this 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 is just straight up two carries. I mean, <laughs> Forsaken Archer and Predator are both hard carry heroes. I, I don't see Forsaken uh, now. The benefit of Forsaken Archer obviously is a great clearing potential. We keep going back to that, and um, but neither one is really the big ganking hero. So save for something like a Monkey King Predator again. That idea where more of a more of a ganking presence moving around the map, setting up kills. Forsaken Archer with the crippling volley, piercing arrows perhaps could. Stay green, though. Okay. Now that's different. <laughs> that is different. That was, that was actually picked, right? Yeah. Not randomed. Mage Bane coming out here as the final pick. Huh. So stay green going different themselves as well. And, you know, maybe... Uh, Maybe a little bit worried of that for whatever reason the predator forsaken. They they, uh, they still have the the push potential by all means, but with that mage main pick, it does mean more of a not as aggressive as a game as we're used to seeing from them recently. It's gonna be fun to see how they actually play around this mage main pick here as a result of it. So okay, fun fun stuff. So we have Predator and Forsaken Archer as carry potential here on the Legion side. Slicks playing as classic Forsaken Archer. You got Move Meander on Predator, and actually they're going to be running in a... Well, are they? They could run an aggressive trial lane. Lodestone... Uh, don't pull the region on him by any means. At least yet. I wonder if they're going to look to run that aggressive trial lane or not. Predator is leading the way, though, with that said. Um... We'll see. I, I I I don't know. I don't know. What will we? I mean, they do have Ophelia jungle. Predator not necessarily the go-to for setting up an aggressive trial lane, but at the same time, with that leap to stone hide, he can assist and stun follow up pretty well. So, and also survive with the stone hide, if need be. You see, he's just charging in right here. Predator looking for a looking for an opening, but Hellborn team falling back. You see the ward of sight getting off though. Ward of sight, ward of rev, I should say. So a couple of camps being blocked right there. And, even a third one being blocked. So Ophelia right off the bat can have trouble, although Minots does pick up two revs himself, so even this one being blocked. So they are really, really, really making sure to block as much as possible. The yellow camp, the only one open here. Um, Ophelia, though, as a result of all that, says, you know what, fine. Have fun in our jungle. I'm going to go bot him. They are running aggressive trial lane. It's going to be with Lodestone. So Glacius, Lodestone, Torturer. Now... But stay green, either they call it or they, they just saw. They saw what was probably going to be happening. They adjusted early on. They sent Keeper top, and he's going to be more than fine. You have Ophelia already in the other jungle before the creeps even spawn. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so right off the bat, stay green calls it, and they're just fine with this landing phase. So now if your team SR, obviously more than likely send something like the Glacius middle right away for to box out this wretched hag, and then probably just send... Uh, Torture to the bottom lane. There's no reason to have a trial lane whatsoever up here. You definitely could just go with the Keeper versus a Lodestone. So they are going to start roaming off the bat. At least maybe look for a kill in the middle lane to start things off. Uh, Mumian, or Swinomons, excuse me, doesn't actually have any abilities just yet. He's kind of waiting to see when it's necessary. Why not? Because that Vulture Lord here. Gonna do a nice stack farm with that. But Torture and Glacius, and although it's still early on in the game, but this is a lot of time being used to make an early adjustment. So you're missing out on a couple creep waves of farm. That could have been yours if you went with a, you know, more of a standard setup from the beginning. Something like just the Suicide Lodestone with your 2-2 lanes, both bottom top, or bottom and mid, I should say. But again, a mix of Team SR wanted to try to, to play, make a risky move to start things off, and, you know, understandably so, you gotta face something. Actually, Predator leaving in right here on Ophelia. He doesn't have Stone Hide, actually. He did not level it up. Wind Card Ibra is first. He's going to be locked down. There is some turn potential with that set. And yes, he is going to be bloodlusted right there. And now we see the chase on to Torture. Forked Lightning coming out. He is on the run and will survive, but that hurts. I mean, they were collapsing, hoping to kill maybe Ophelia right there, but obviously it just completely backfired. And how about this? SDS yeah, sending the aggressive pseudo trial in as a result of everything. Going Mage Main Master bought him. And uh, you also look at Predator's build. Now, it's not, it's not, it's not like it's a weird build by any means. 
you know, a carnivorous venomous leap, but he was at mismatched early on, and you could argue maybe the stone height might have, might, might have made sense to go, but you know, definitely hindsight at the same time. Let's see if he had stone height there. Maybe a different story, but he gets bloodlust nonetheless, and we'll have to live with that. So as really expected because of how the lane set up initially, it's a pretty good start here for Stay Green overall. Now you do see Mage Man, he buys a TP and you can only guess what that means. It's actually middle lane, dive in the middle lane. Ophelia coming up with the Catman Champion. I uh, got trouble getting my mouse over there, apologize for that, but we definitely saw it coming and Forsaken Archer gets collapsed. That is not helping things either and just looks like she's even going for the bottle build on Forsaken being in that middle lane. But Ophelia doing a good job roaming around, being in the aggressive jungle already. Gets the kill, but here we go. Mage Bane porting top. You got Wretched Hag, or not, uh, Keeper of the Force, excuse me, porting bottom. And Master of Arms just gonna make his way up there. Already having double stack ancients with that said. And as always, Stay Green most likely look to do those uh, earlier on in this game. So, again, just solid start here for Stay Green, making the adjustments necessary. A lot of movement going on the map, as you can see. And now you have Predator, what should be a little bit better of a time farming now, although Granted Keeper is level 4 here, so again, obviously not going to be any kills coming out, but Predator should be able to get some good farm now when it comes to his creep score at least, but... Mage Man, really the same story here. He is already 17-3. and three. He gets a 16-3 and three Predator, so even with that death, actually Moomy Enter has managed to do pretty solid with the creep farm. And you have Torture actually going to be counter-warding here. So, oh, we can't get it before four minutes, though. That's unfortunate. So, you will have to wait to the five-minute mark before you can even stack that and then eventually pull it. So, that, that, that's really unfortunate. I can at least get that first spawn. Top end of the meantime, low sun, he gets completely burned out of his mana. So, he has the rock show case, though. Master, Master of Arms coming in right here with a charge shot. He just look at the hero blocking as well. Casey trying to just walk away, but obviously not going to happen. Great lockdown there from the Hellborn team. Stay green up 3 nothing to start things off. So once again, you're already looking at a very difficult start here for TMSR. You know, the more I'm thinking about it and as, as the picks are coming together, you know, so TMSR, again, with the picks that they made, the Predator, the Forsaken Archer, kind of like they did for the, with the Wild Soul Mage Bane, but that was the that was, uh, next level of passive. At least with Predator and especially Forsaken Archer, these heroes are a lot more involved in that mid-game, early-game phase even. So, you know, that mindset of, okay, we can't obviously match up. It's hard to even stop the push in the first place. We're just going to at least keep you out of our base and then eventually come back with farm hard carry you into the late game. But that's where SG, you know, they went the mage main pick saying, okay, so if you want to try to go with that game plan about carrying us in the later game stage, we'll still have that great push potential, but we'll throw a mage main on ourselves as well. So the chances of you out carrying, of, out carrying us in the late game stage definitely uh, dying off quite a bit, so... I definitely uh, think that's where State Green very likely was thinking, and TMSR for that matter as well. Top lane, low zone again in a little bit of trouble, but actually getting back before anything comes through. You do see Ophelia thinking about setting up. Oh, low zone getting pretty aggressive right here. He's trying to lead some experience, though. The Minotaur stun missing, actually, but he's drained of mana. He gets the stone drill off just before Fork Landing connects, slowing him down. Health potion, though, from Kezio will be canceled. It's not going to be enough, though. Kezu makes the getaway, but you see right there how trying to be a little greedy to leap some experience almost cost him his life in the end. But he is fine. But again, you look at the big picture. Mage Man already finishing Steam Boots. And I, I'm very interested to see if he goes for something like a Helm for more Battle Fight or Glacius, by the way. Bat Blast, he's going to tick down to Haunt anyways. He eats a tree, but it's not going to matter. So what else does finish him off in the end. But, uh... But what Mage Bane goes for, it, you know, more is he going to be going for more of the Helm of the Black Legion because it's going to get involved in team fights earlier on, or is he just going to go something like straight into the Rune Cleaver here? Just prioritizing farm, figuring that he has a team around him that's going to be doing just fine, and I actually wouldn't be surprised to see that if anything. That, you know, what my team's doing great so far. I have a great team surrounding me both for push and team fighting, even without me. You got Ophelia, Keeper, Hag, and Master of Arms. Yeah, I think I would like to see the. Uh, to see the Rune Cleaver build here. He does get the live tube again. That's no direct answer yet. That could be either the Helm of the Black Legion or Rune Cleaver. But I, I, I think we are going to see a Rune Cleaver from Jesse, so. He's already farming 360. And uh, 
And, you know, with that said, start expecting stacks to start happening in the jungle. Again, those double stack ancients still there. So you're not doing them just yet. That'll come up, though. So when Amels, he's only sitting on a little red booties. Bottom lane, Rook comes out. There's initiation from Lowe's on the follow-up. Can he get Nature's Bell off? Can he actually get it off? The dust comes out, so it doesn't matter. The dumpster top on top of that. That's got to feel good for Mumiander, I'm sure. He's, he's, you know, last game was not going good for him. He had the, he had the dirt moment at the end there on Pestilence, jumping into nothing. This game didn't start off the best, but he gets a big kill right there. Now his teammates in the other hand. Forsaken Archer again in some trouble. Trying to juke and jive. Maybe go for a turn around. He's going to be bursted out. Pierce Heroes goes off, but it's not enough for the turn kill. He was trying to kind of juke right there a little bit. But Slicks does fall when it's all said and done. Great collapse coming out for Stay Green. Excellent movement, as always, from Ophelia. And now Hag's going to open up the door to push the tower a little bit. It looks like uh, Predator going in the helm of the victim, by the way. So we'll probably see the Insanitarius as his first item choice, and, and definitely like that decision. You know, the par Parasite seems like a little too aggressive, especially for this game. Sanitarius, more of the comfortable item, both for farming and for getting involved if necessary. Alchemist Bones would have just been a little over the top. Forsaken Archer is Slicks, only managing 240 gold per minute. Obviously, that death right there, even it's the second death of the game. He's uh, been having some troubles hacking and sending in another illusion, actually. Kind of scared him off. And Devil of Force back. There's the mana tube, so we are going to see a sustainer into a rune cleaver, it looks like. On Mage and again, I definitely agree with that. It's just, especially with the way it's going, the game is going, you are. Feeling pretty good about that if you're staying green. So, but Team SR again, they they clearly with their strategy, they're they're not looking to get involved either. With that said, they're they're fine sitting back and gonna go for a kill on a wretched hag, but not enough. I believe the crippling volley hit, but the freeze from Glacia is just not in time. So Predator has Ghost Marchers finished, and working towards that Sanitarius now. So that's where Stay Green, uh, even though they have a Mage being free farming too and work for the Rune Cleaver, you know, you kind of think uh, back of their minds, it's like, okay, you know, we're definitely winning the carry battle in that sense, but they do have both him and Forsaken Archer. And we do have a very aggressive team early on. Dust is not going to hit Keeper. Lowstone coming in with a Dust, I believe it was, but just out of range of Keeper, so he's going to be fine. Going to go for Deny. The minions and vulnerability comes out. Oh, can he actually get the deny off? Limp trying for it. Nope, Fiske actually gets killed. And they are going to fall back before too much happens. Or are they? Wretched Ag coming in right here on the broom. Nope, not going to chase him. I believe that'll be the end of that. Or will it? Predator getting pretty greedy right here. <laughs> Goes back in to deny the catapult, actually. But pays off, and he's going to continue to farm. So, again, 350 gold per minute. Moomiana recovering very nicely here in this game so far. Deserving credit for that. Forsaken Archer has a Soul Scream Ring finish delivered to him. Obviously, Energizer, great item pickup for him. He's going to be collapsed in the meantime in the middle lane. Here comes a follow Bat Blast on a Scream. The nuke from Ophelia and the easy peasy kill. However, at what cost? Ophelia, Shadow Strum, but this touch is going to be used. Save him initially, not for line though. Lowstone gets good up for the kill right there. But now he's on the run. Wretched Act blinking and no longer vulnerable though. As a result of that Shatter Storm, so Lowstone taking take it up a little bit right here. The auto attack's coming out, give it the force. The Ruby's gonna be used, and that will guarantee that kill. So we'll use right there. Skull the King trapping Glacius. Ophelia still doing work after death. Ophelia assisting with Wretched Hag, but Glacius gonna barely get away when it's all said and done. So We'll play with them with the Hellboy team. They're going to collapse you in the middle lane. Keep the force going for the tower push. Poor coming in for Forsaken, though. It's going to be close. Nice deny by Slicks right there. That could be difficult, especially with that Keeper of the Force minions, but they do get the deny in the end. You could argue maybe Predator, if you ported right there, could have maybe gotten a kill or two. But at the same time, he did just free farm as a result of all that. And it is, it is going upwards quite a bit, 270. But the Mage Bane does remain on top, and his Rune Cleaver... Uh, does he already have one broadsword? He doesn't, it looks like, so I think he still needs two broadswords. Sitting in a very comfortable uh, 1,200 or 400 plus gold per minute with that said. Uh, Keeper of the Forest, Ring of Sorcery, Astrolay being worked on by Ophelia, of course. There's the one, was it two broadswords? It's only one broadsword, okay. Yeah, he still needs uh, the second one, but can help us farm a little bit more. There's the Insanitarius at the same time coming out from Predator. So, again, I will say Predator going with the Ghost Marcher is also a little greedy. Predator definitely a hero that relies a lot on attack speed as well, and probably any right-click carry in the end, but I mean, we end up choosing to go the Ghost Marchers route, giving him that phase effect. 
as well as just the enhanced damage as a result of auto attack damage, but you know, his attack speed going to be hurt a little bit because of that, as well as his tankiness, of course, and hell, you see right now, even, he's still below a thousand life, actually. Something to keep in mind, but with the Sanitarius, we'll bulk him up, at least when he uses it. Yeah, I don't know about that, though. I, 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 I definitely would have liked to see the Steam Boots on him. Uh, a little greedy, but hey, pays off. Then who am I? Who am I to judge? Torture at the top lane. He's going to be gone by Mage Bane. Going to be fine. The only level 5 Torture. I feel like Mage Bane could have really committed to that, but obviously he he's, doesn't want to get too distracted. Nor does he want to get turned on, so. Gurgis to fall back and play the safe route. It really was nearby as well. And again, that Astral of is going to be coming up here shortly. Stay green, though. Again, the, the pace of the game for them, it's not like it, they haven't been all that aggressive by any means. They've been in the past, including last game even. Wretched Act, though, she just finished her life brand. Seems like they may just ultimately play more of the competing farm game. And that's Hacks that definitely here you can't forget about as well. I know I talked about Mage Bane versus Predator Forsaken Archer, but obviously Wretched Hag, in fact, she is basically tied with her teammate Mage Bane in terms of farm right here. So, and the life brand even going to enhance that. So both him and the Mage Bane are going to be dangerous threats as well. So maybe that's where the farm game is at the advantage of Stake. Energizer finished by Forsaken Archer. Supporting cast for our Legion side is not really all there <laughs> as far as farm goes. Compared to the Hellborn side, you got Ophelia and Keeper farming very nicely. They got their utility going. So that's also a big difference so far in this game. Forsaken another 1300 gold saved up. Interested to see, especially again, the way the game's going, the pace of it. Do you go right into the Firebrand here? Do you go into a Shrunken Head? At least maybe the Mighty Blade. I I, I think she could risk going the Firebrand here. I honestly do. It just it just feels like the way this game is going, it's going to develop here. I think the Firebrand, even straight into Geometer's Bane, you could argue is a good option here, especially against the Root in general. And <laughs> Slicks being class of Slicks here. <laughs> Using that piercing arrows right there, knowing that he's going to go back to base most likely anyways to regen, maybe even buy an item. He just uses the piercing arrows to clean up the middle wave quickly and then falls back. So one of the only players that seems like he's willing to do that as, as frequently as he is. Those ultimate cooldowns. Bottom lane in the meantime, though, it's going to be heavily put. Torture coming in. Balls to the wall right here. That's an illusion. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You DC? It's gay, uh, just sending in the illusion, though. Here's another one. Gonna be quickly taken up by Predator. That's not an illusion. That's the real one. Moonman is like, I want to start a fight. Damn it! He jumps in, and Sanitarius goes up in with the Stone Eye, going for Ophelia. The auto attacks again. The attack speed, you can tell it's not really the quickest. Going the Ghost Marches here, and he is gonna be locked down. Counter burst coming out. Moonmander very aggressive around the outside. Thought he had the team support, and honestly, you know they had the numbers, but. Ophelia's touch, Master's call. Those are two big abilities, obviously, as you expect with the combo of heroes coming into play. And while that's happening, Keeper and Mage Bane push the top lane. I, you just can't have that. It, you can't have that here if you're TMSR. You're forcing a fight, you pretty much forced a fight right there, and obviously not the best initiation in the first place. And obviously it did not work out. So you got to stay green now. All of a sudden, 8,700 goal lead, 8,000 experience lead. And guess what? You have a Rune Cleaver now in Mage Bane. So let's just watch that GPM chart as it grows, oh, grows. Ancient's also being stacked right here. They're even going to go for Congor. Because why not? Keeper and Ophelia are already leading the way. Mage Bane assisting. You're not stopping this if you're the Legion team. Did he just use Piercing Arrows again? Yeah, he did on Ancients here. So Slick's just really trying to keep his GPM up that way. But there's a free Conger kill. Wretched Hag, she is well on the way to the Grimoire. So Swinemons has that going for him too. He's 4-0-2. Oh, as far as hero kill stats in this game, Fitzgay just simply wants to get a ward down and run away. <laughs> Rev there. There's a Firebrand. So like I said, I, I, <laughs> well, I mean, maybe after that last fight, maybe not as much confidence, but it's, it is that fine line, though. It's like... You know, I could go for Shrunken Head. That slows down my farm a lot, though. And is that even going to make the difference in the end? I, we kind of have to... We, we built a strategy around competing in farm. It's really what it comes down to it did TMSR. They definitely built a strategy around competing in farm. So the Firebrand 
And I think just straight Geos. I don't even think value, I don't even think you go for Shrunken Head here, really. Straight Geos is still great against the Keeper Root, of course. So it brings that to the table still. Um, but we'll see what he does go for in the end. Triple Stack Ancients being clear as a team, stay green style. You got a token of life on Wretched Hag, and that Grimoire is... Well, she has enough gold for it, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Going to be sent back right here. That's good teamwork. <laughs> see what happen. There you go. Grimoire purchased by Swindle. So 15% more damage outburst from him. Look at the melee gear. Does not stack with itself. <laughs> that would be absurd. Elder Parasite taking a... Uh, Picked up even by Predator. Actually, Ophelia's here. And Parasite, uh, Predator gonna leave on it, but look at that. The Skeleton King Nat still going through the physical because it's physical. And so he has to fall back. Obviously, that's why it works against Shrunken Head Tempest being the physical net. So it's actually a great reason why Ophelia is gonna be excellent in this game on top of um, the root from Keeper with that said. Master of Arms getting a very aggressive Ward of Sight down there. Piercing arrows used once again by Forsaken. Clean up the Ancients. Slicks, he has 400 gold per minute. All of a sudden, Slicks is overtaken even Predator as his top farmer on the team. That actually says something. Lodestone being gone right here. Are they going to follow this up fully? Not really. However, Torturer turns around with Chain Reactions. And I think that was a, not even necessary, honestly, but try to make something happen. Look at Kalash, just like, I'm not even going to be involved here. I'm going to pour it out. That was a smart move, because if he tried to escape right there, he was definitely dead, so... Good TP coming out from him. But, uh... They're gonna lose a tower here, and I don't, I don't think he fights this. He's gonna Piercing Arrows, so it doesn't isn't enough, actually. He doesn't have the Piercing Arrows to help clean up this creep wave. And it's gonna be massively pushed to give it the force running in! He does have a root, but can't get close enough. Energizer used and gets back, so... Nice tower push, though. Another massive goal lead here in favor of the Hellborn team. And Mageman also kind of pushing the top lane. She makes a counter, pushing the top lane. And the top tower also falls. He has an Abyssal Skull, by the way, on top of 1,800 gold. Look at this greedy build by Master Varnes. But Z-Freak, again, he, he tends to have this high GPM simply because of his teamwork, as well as just being a great player in general, of course. But Lex Talion is picked up on top of the Energizer already. So <laughs> you, have your, you have a main support with the Energizer Lex Talion. It's amping damage. I don't even know what to say. Torture just <laughs> torture just ran into Hag, and Hag said hello. A very violent like screamed in his face. He died. So wretched Hag, two thousand more gold saved up. Guess what? Well on his way to a shrunken head. Well, that's what we pretty much see whenever Grimoire is picked up. Frostburn's the item of choice here on Slicks. I I don't like it. And I know I'm just breaking CPK, and this is Slicks, and he's the pro player and everything. Oh wow, he's going to be able to TP out. Let's keep it the force runs right by. I'll get to the back to that in just a second right here. But we do see initiated from the Legion trying to get aggressive. But here comes Keeper with the flank. He has a word. He gets it off right there. He's going to be locked down. But at what cost? They do get the kill. In comes a Shatterstorm. Predator is going to end up falling though. Pretty good placement by the Piercing Arrows on top of that. You got Master Vars and Aphelia still here. The Wretched Axe still in the, in, the, in the front line. So hat trick coming up for Swindle. Make it a quad kill most likely. Can't forsake Archer actually get away. She has another blink in one second. There's a blink. Oh, but looking for Staken Arch here, hiding in the trees. <laughs> but he gets sniped out by Z Freak. And that will be the end of that. Genocide, genocide indeed for the Hellborn team. Okay, so going back to the Frostburn pickup, though, it's the root. I mean, it's self explanatory, really, but the root. You're, you're get, you get hit by a root, you're not getting away for Staken Arch here. And I don't even know if he was in that fight right there or not, if he got hit by the root at that time. But uh, yeah. So go, go straight for the Frostburn, though. It does obviously bulk yourself up a little bit more, and you now the split shot will be nice for spreading out this slow, I guess, but which he doesn't even have yet. He actually wants stats, it looks like. Yeah, he definitely wants stats here. And over the split shot, which is you know, obviously fine. Oh, Mage Bank getting caught. Gonna blink away, though. <laughs> By caught, I mean not really. What does he have being delivered? Firebrand. And he has 1,600 gold. The lead is just tremendous. 20, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> TMSR, it, they just, uh, you know, running into the wall, man. <laughs> it, it's, to, it's just cycle one with that said, and hell, they could even rematch them in the grand finals if they make it all the way, which, you know, wouldn't be surprising at all. 
But clearly, again, stay green. Not only against Team SR, just stay green right now in general. They they have their strategies are working just like it was at the end of season one. And uh, this is why, you know, up until the, especially in the, as we talked about on the podcast and everything, for a while I was always very unsure of who to who to think the favorite is in the event. But going in, once we saw that performance, especially at the Predator tournament, you could just tell they were clicking, and it's it's not stopped clearly, <laughs> as as expected, going into cycle one. So stay green, as as great of a team Too Much Sugar is, and they gave it an effort, man. But it's not, it wasn't going to happen. They, they they do fall short, and that means stay green takes a series two games to nothing. And uh, TMSR will drop to the loser's bracket with that said. So, um, But on top of that, of course, still in the event. Going to be going into next weekend, starting in the loser's bracket, whereas State Green will be in the winner bracket finals. Now, who they will be facing, you got Team USA and Lion Esports Club, as I stated earlier. They, of course, uh, they of course rescheduled their match, so not going to be happening right now. But so as you can see, the bracket's right here. You also have two matches in the loser's bracket currently happening. Um, Team Excellent versus VDT. It looks like they may be going into Game Three, and then Justice League versus Nice Prize Pool, also happening down there. I believe uh, Coldcast is at least covering one of those, so you can definitely head over to Coldcast there uh, to check out that series. So, uh, with that said, I mean I think we we should actually jump into the other one to uh, 